Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and I'm a full-time reseller. I'm sitting here on the eve of my 35th birthday in uh, my backyard, so please excuse any nature sounds and or airplanes that might fly by. It's seriously too nice of a day to stay inside and I had an amazing thrift trip today and I just wanted to make a quick little haul video for you. I don't normally do haul videos, but you know, it's a little present to me to be able to make a quick little fun video that's not like a standard thrift along with voiceover or a um, retail arbitrage sweep kind of video. I just wanted to do something quick, easy, and fun for my birthday. And my present to you is you get to see all these cool things I found. And this chair that I'm sitting in, I literally just like found sitting back here. I think it's my husband's old chair that he just left to rot <laughs> outside. So I'm gonna use it. All right, let's get into the finds. Roll the intro. So as stated in my last video, on Wednesdays, I am a creature of habit. I go to the same thrift store every Wednesday. I grab my little drinky drink from Sheets and I go there. And lately I've been going to the bins too, because I usually have like 20 or 30 minutes before I have to leave and go pick up my kids from school. And I used to go to a different thrift store, but I've been um, spending that time at the bins instead. And lately I've been finding some pretty good stuff at the bins. I don't like to go to the bins because um, Number one, I can't human properly. Like, if anybody has had the unfortunate pleasure of being around me for any period of time in in real life, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but I also cannot handle people being around me. And people love to crowd at the bins. But the fines are so good and so cheap that I've been um, making it a point to step out of my comfort zone and go to the bins every week. I stopped at my first thrift store and I went straight to the showcase where they normally keep their perfumes and stuff and I found um, this first perfume. It's this Christian Dior Dune 1.7 ounce for $25. Um, I don't know if the camera is going to be cool and focused on it, but it's you can see that it's, it's um, like it's come off. It's really hard to read what it is. Dune is such an iconic bottle to me as somebody who buys and sells perfume and also collects them that like I knew what it was just by the bottle shape. But even if you couldn't, it does, again, focus please, um, say on the bottom of most perfumes. So if you're ever running into one where it has rubbed off or something, check the bottom. Unfortunately, I don't know that I can get away calling this one new and you can only sell new beauty on eBay unless it's vintage and then you can sell it in the perfume collectibles category um, as a used product. So I might be able to sell it on eBay there. And when I looked up the comps, it's about 50 to $75. So not too bad. I'll about double my money or so on that one. And um, as I'm getting ready to go further down the showcase to look at some other stuff, um, another worker, the one that's not behind the counter, but the one that's like stocking stuff, brings a fresh cart of stuff behind the counter to the worker. Um, and it is filled to the brim with um, bagged beauty products and perfumes. So I head over with the girl behind the counter to go start picking through this cart because it's behind the counter and I can't like grab anything. She has to put it on the counter for me, but she knows that I'm interested in those perfumes. So we walk over there and she starts pulling them out and putting them on the counter for me to look at. First one she pulls out is this um, Victoria's Secret, very uh, oh so sexy. Um, again, it is not quite full, so it'll have to be either used on eBay under the perfume collectibles category, which I don't know if I can do for this one because it's not vintage uh, like the last one was. But this one is, um, it should sell just fine on Mercari. But um, yeah, I paid $20 for it. I think I can sell this one for, again, like, 50 60 dollars something like that so we got one 50 dollar perfume and another 50 dollar perfume this trip is shaping up to be pretty good this one i'm showing you because it is a fail i grabbed it in all of my kind of uh rabid fury of i need this perfume oh my god this is all such good stuff um it's a fail <laughs> this is a um carl lagerfeld chloe it is um 1.7 and it is brand new. If I take it out of here, you can tell that it probably hasn't been um, used at all. It's like, it's pretty darn full. The problem with it is, is this is not a spray. It's a splash perfume. 
and these do not sell for quite as much money as these sprays. I initially thought this was a spray because I've sold Chloe before, and I figured I could buy it for 60 and sell it for 120. So it was worth it to buy um, to me for 60. But being it's a splash, it's only worth about 60. So I'll be lucky to get my money back out of this one. So I was going on gut instinct with most of these things because I didn't want to have my phone out looking up these perfumes as she's like handing them to me. That would be, I'm sure most people would, but like for me, that's weird and awkward for some reason. So again, I was just looking at them and making a judgment call. Um, and I did grab basically all of them. Next one was this Rock Revival for $8. And um, for some reason, I knew Rock Revival perfumes were worth like big money. So again, I, I wasn't hesitating to look it up, especially for $8. I don't know how full it is because um, it doesn't sound full. It sounds like it's maybe half full. Um, but the one I found when I comped it later sold for like $150 and it was brand new. So I'm looking maybe $75 for this and um, being it's not vintage and being it's not full, it again will probably go on Mercari. This next one though takes the cake. It is a brand new in box, like indisputably new, um, Escada Rock and Rio. This I paid $8 for, and I should be able to sell it. I think one sold literally today for $130. The next thing she pulls out, and I did not have to comp this because I've sold it before, is this Bath & Body Works uh, Thankful Foam Bath. I, I'm pretty sure I've sold this exact foam bath before um, for $50. This one, unfortunately, it's pretty pretty used. Like, I cannot get away with calling this new. Um, it was $5. Again, it'll probably have to go on Mercari instead of eBay because you cannot sell the used lotions and bath products and stuff like that on eBay anymore. You can try. People always message me and say, like, what would you do with this? And I'm like, you can try, but you can't be surprised when eBay takes it down and or gives you a suspension. But I have had like zero trouble selling Bath & Body Works products on Mercari, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. Also, because not only was this one in the cart, the matching lotion was in the cart as well. But also this one is about equally as used. It's not, there's no way I could get away with calling this new. It's been used down to like here. But anyway, that one was $3 and this one was $5. Maybe I'll put them on Mercari together for a hundred. That's probably what I'm gonna try. We start getting into the smaller, more minor um, beauty products. And there was a lot in there that I did not get because it's like little trial size stuff from brands that I know are not gonna be worth the money. I need, I need just one room in my house to film in that I can leave my lights set up and it's gonna look fine. I can't do that in this house without building an addition. With your support, if you watch my videos, if you like them, if you comment, if you subscribe, if you do all the things that algorithm loves, maybe, just maybe, the YouTube gods will smile upon me and I will get some dollar e-bucks to make something where I don't have to film in my car or my living room or in the woods behind my house. But I did grab this Alterna Bamboo product because I've had really good luck with this brand before. It was $2. It's hard to tell if it's used or not. I'll have to shine a light in it, but it at least had the cap. When I looked up on eBay uh, via the UPC, I found two sold listings and none listed. And the last sold listing sold for $42. So even if I have to sell this on Mercari for less, you know, I paid two bucks for it. We're gonna say I'll sell it for around 40. I also grabbed this Kristoff Robin um, Regenerating Mask. Again, this one is like sealed, indisputably brand new. Um, I think the last one I saw sell, sell sold for 40 and this was uh, just four bucks. So great find. Then I grabbed this trial size um, baggie of Youth to the People, which is not a brand I'm familiar with. Um, when I tried to uh, comp it with one of these UPCs on the box. Didn't look like there were any sold, but there were a bunch listed. And I'm like, for three bucks, I bet I could at least sell this stuff for 20 because it's brand new in the box. And it's like, it looks like it's a complete set of something. So this is the point where I'm just kind of like grabbing little stuff where I'm like, yeah, this will probably sell and make money. It might not be like a huge score though. 
that was also my line of thinking with this. I don't know how to pronounce this brand. I'm guessing it's 111 skin. Um, this was $3 and I should be able to sell it for 15 to 20. I don't really mind picking up these little small flips because they're cheap. They don't take up much room. And I don't really care if I'm gonna make like five, eight bucks on something because the work involved is like non-existent. And I know a great haul video is like, look at all these big money things that I found. Like, no, it's, it's okay to find little things too. You know I'm all about the smalls, the lights and the cheaps. Like I'm not gonna step over $5. If I found $5 laying on the street, I would pick it up. And I equate stuff like this to stuff like that. I don't really know what this is. Um, it's some sort of hair treatment. I'm not sure what the name of the brand is, number four perhaps. Um, but I got it because it came with the little like paperwork and everything and it's brand new. And again, this is another like $3 item that I can sell for 15 to 20. Small profits, totally fine. Last beauty product I grabbed was in this crap bag that was not um, with the other stuff. It was in a different part of the store that I looked around in. Um, it had, first of all, the bag is $4. It has nothing good in it except for this Crabtree and Evelyn lavender soap. Um, I will always pick up Crabtree and Evelyn stuff if it's cheap because the the fan base for Crabtree and Evelyn products is there and they will buy this kind of stuff no problem. Again, like $15, $20 maybe. Not big profits, but consistent bread and butter kind of stuff. The last beauty product I picked up was this. And I don't really know what to say about this because there are no comps. This product is still made. You can still buy the Evian um, water face mist stuff. But this is clearly vintage. It comes in an aluminum can. It has no date on it. So I'm guessing like 90s, maybe early 2000s. And I bought this not because the product has any use. Like I'm not expecting anyone to buy this to like use on their face. But being it's vintage, it could sell to a prop department. It could sell to a collector. I don't know if such a collector exists, but I've learned that there are collectors for everything and I should not be surprised anymore. So if I find something with like weird old packaging and it's cheap, I'm gonna take a chance on it. So this is totally a like, we're gonna see. We're just gonna put it out there and we're gonna see kind of product. I'm trying to work quick because my battery's probably gonna die and we're running out of daylight. But the last thing I found at that particular thrift store before I went down the street to the bins was this um, Fisher Price Briarberry um, Berry Ann Bear. I've sold the Briarberry plushes before. They're super cute. They're like super fuzzy. Um, pastel colors. They, they're always identified by this little um, embroidery on the foot, but I've never seen one that had the um, original tag before. So I grabbed it just because of that. I'm like, I, I bet there's somebody out there who's dying to have one with the tag. So I paid two bucks. I'm going to list it for 35. I think I'll probably get around that for it. Then I drove down the street to the bins. Um, when I go to the bins, I'm again, I'm only going for like 20, 30 minutes. I don't spend all day there. I don't do multiple bin rotations or anything. I'm not like a bins lifer. I can only tolerate the bins for like 20 minutes at a time before I freak out and I kind of have to leave. So that um, part of my routine that has been finish up at thrift one. And then if I have any spare time, go down the street, pick through some bins and see if I find some stuff has been working really well for me. It was incredibly busy there this afternoon, um, so that was annoying. And I did come at a bin change time. And you might think if you go to the bins, you should you should be like everyone else and dive bomb those fresh bins because that's where you're gonna find the best stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Wrong. Every time I've gone to the bins for the past couple months or so um, that I've in, um, started incorporating having the bins in my routine is that I have been going to the bin after it's been picked over by everyone else. And I'm still finding great stuff. All the stuff I'm gonna show you that I found has been stuff that other people have dive bombed the bin. It has been new. And then they move on, and then I come in and dig it, and I find this stuff. First up was this Himiko Toga um, like plush bag clip from My Hero Academia. Um, anime plushes can be kind of hit or miss, especially because they're like baked like crazy. This one looks pretty darn um, not fake though. I tried to find a comp for it that had this, this clip. Most of the ones I found that looked identical to this plush had a metal chain. They were like hangers instead of clips. 
So um, I did find one that didn't have the clip, but had the little metal hanger for, I want to say 30 or $35. Um, so I'm guessing I can get between like 20 and 30 for this one. And I paid five bucks and some change for everything I bought at the bins today. So you can get some great scores on the cheap if you're um, willing to be bombarded by human beings, which reminds me, I just remembered when I was digging for this plush and I saw this particular plush, there was a man beside me like this close, um, like reaching over me and digging in the bin. He wasn't even like picking something specific that he saw and like wanted to grab and run away. He was literally like digging over me and like, I have my, my horse blinders on when I'm at the bins. Like, please don't look at me. Please don't talk to me. Please don't touch me. Um, he's literally like two inches from my ear being like, I'm digging a little close to you. Is it okay if I'm digging this close to you? Bruh. If you have to ask, the answer is no. It should go without saying that if you, if you feel you are invading somebody's space, that maybe you should not do that. And I answered him. I'm like, I'm just gonna move farther down. I was not gonna like confirm like, oh yeah, it's great. Just, just dig two inches from my face. Like, A-okay, dude. I don't know what it is about people at the bins. Um, it brings out the worst of humanity. I always say you're gonna meet the worst of humanity at Golden Corral or any American style buffet and the bins. I don't know why that is, but it is. Because people at the bins also love to do this thing where they like are digging in one bin and have their cart like behind them. So you can't get through. They're like, here's one side, here's the other, completely blocked by one person. You should always have your cart in front of you. Don't have it beside you because then you're blocking the only, the, like the opposite aisle of traffic, right? And if you like are trying to get by someone and you either like do that thing where you lock eyes or um, you just be like, excuse me, they'll look at you like you're the crazy one. It's like, can we not? Can you please just like get out of the way? What is this? As I'm moving along in the bins, I see this. And it said on it, it had like old school graphics, proximity um, warning alert. I was like, okay, this looks like a sensor. This has a cord to it. I bet this is a laser tag game. And as I'm digging, 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 I find the gun it's attached to. And it's got a little light at the end. It's got the same kind of graphics. The battery compartment is clean. And uh, I was looking around for it and I was able to see, you won't be able to see it, but it says Tomy 1987. Again, another airplane. So I'm like, all right, it's definitely a laser tag game. Uh, that means there's two of these. I'm gonna have to dig and see if I was lucky enough to find two because for some reason, you only ever find one. But no, the thrifting gods, the resale gods, the bins gods, the birthday gods, whatever you wanna thank them. I found both. <laughs> I found both in the bin. Both battery compartments are clean. Everything looks like it's, it's in good condition. I can only hope it works because if it does, it looks like I can sell these Tomy um, light guns, laser tag guns for around $75. And again, this was in a picked over bin that had come out fresh and was ravaged before I got to it. I also grabbed these Moxie Girls bikes. Um, I can't say no to doll accessories, um, especially little bikes like these, like they're cute. They, they don't weigh anything, so at the bins, this is next to nothing to pay for. So I just kind of threw them in with everything else. Um, I'll probably sell them together for like 12 bucks or so. Again, small profits, but you pay next to nothing for this stuff, so it's fine. Last but not least, a dish brush. And I know what you're thinking. Have you lost your mind? That's disgusting. Who is buying a used dish brush? But this is a battery operated Dawn Power Scrub dish brush. And for some reason, my brain knew that this was worth money. I don't know how, I don't remember why. Maybe I've found one before, maybe someone else found one before and it like stuck in my brain. But I remember this had money. If it were brand new, it would sell for like $35. Being it's used, and the brushes don't seem used, but like the handle, used meaning out of the package, not necessarily in like bad condition or anything, because the brushes still look relatively um, unused. I'm gonna ask like 20 bucks for it. I bet I can get it. And at the bins, I paid again, $5 and some change for everything that you saw. 
I'll make it back on literally one of these items and then some, and then everything else is pure profit. So anyway, that is everything I found today on my pre-birthday thrift trip. I hope you enjoyed my haul video, my quick little fun haul. I just wanted to get something quick and fun out for my birthday and um, don't worry, you will be getting two videos this month because I don't count this, this kind of video for anything. I didn't even add everything up, but this is what, over $500 worth of stuff in like an hour and a half's worth of picking. I really can't complain. If you're not already subscribed, um, please do because I make nothing but reselling content and chances are if you're watching this, you are interested in reselling. So if you wanna see my videos pop up in your feed, I do thrift stuff, I do eBay, Amazon, retail arbitrage, you name it. You're gonna to wanna to subscribe so my videos show up in your feed. If you like this quick and easy haul format, um, or if you wanna see like me do another haul video like this, let me know in the comments. I'd also like to know if you want me to do a full bins video, cause I know people love bins videos, but being there more than 20 minutes might freak me out. But if you guys really want it, I will do it. If you're still here after all of this, leave me a like, thumbs up so that I know. Now get out there, have fun and find something good.